Welcome back for another 5-minute movie recap. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of the 2015 American post-apocalyptic horror drama film called, Maggie. The film is directed by Henry Hobson and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Abigail Breslin and Jolie Richardson. Maggie is a drastic change for Schwarzenegger, who is most recognized for his appearances in action films. Warning. There will be spoilers ahead, so please proceed with caution. In today's Midwestern United States, Civilization is struggling to operate in the aftermath of a zombie outbreak that is barely under control, necroambulism. Maggie Vogel, Abigail Breslin, calls her father from a broken city under curfew. Her voicemail begs him not to look for her and expresses her love for him. Her arm had been bitten. She fled home to protect her family, knowing she only had a few weeks until the necroambulist virus turned her cannibalistic. Despite Maggie's warning, her father Wade, Arnold Schwarzenegger, had been searching for two weeks. When he finds her in a hospital for the sick, he brings her home to care for her until she must be confined. During their return, Wade is attacked by a zombie in an abandoned gas station, and he breaks its neck. Bobby and Molly, Maggie's younger half-siblings, are departing to be with their aunt. Maggie confides in Bobby, who is mainly aware of what she is going through. She withdraws from her family, unable to cope with her bleak condition and unsure whether to contact her friends. She fractures a finger on her diseased arm after falling off a swing, and black goo pours from it. Maggie chops off her finger, terrified, even though she feels little or no pain, and despondent over her failing body. She escapes outdoors and comes upon a neighbor, Nathan, and his little daughter, both of whom are infected. Wade kills both zombies but is filled with sorrow. The responding sheriff and deputy hold Wade innocent, blaming Nathan's wife Bonnie for concealing her sick family from authorities. Bonnie pays Wade a visit that night, protesting the inhumane treatment of the afflicted and disclosing that Nathan had shut himself in with his young daughter getting infected himself, rather than abandoning her to die among strangers in quarantine. A compassionate doctor lies to Maggie and on her medical report about the progression of her infection, but tells Wade that if he wants to avoid quarantine, he must euthanize Maggie himself, either with an exceedingly painful medication combination or by making it fast. Wade and Maggie make the best of their last days by remembering Maggie's late mother. Maggie strives to maintain normalcy despite her physical decline, she is woken by maggots writhing in her dying arm. She attends a campfire with high school pals Allie and Trent, an infected boy Maggie previously dated and kisses. He spreads stories about the dreadful circumstances in the quarantine facility, claiming that he would die before going there. Maggie smells food near her stepmother Caroline one day, but Caroline smells nothing and speculates that Wade is cooking below. Caroline discovers, to her dismay, that Maggie has begun to scent living flesh, in this case Caroline's, as food. Trent makes a frantic call to Maggie. Trent has shut himself inside his bedroom at home after smelling another person, his father, and feeling hungry. Maggie attempts to console him but stands helpless as the cops take Trent to quarantine. Maggie returns home and discovers a trapped fox in the woods. Later, she comes into her house, frantic and covered in blood, explaining to her terrified parents through sobs that she wanted to liberate the fox but couldn't stop herself from assaulting it. Wade dispatches the half-eaten fox. Caroline walks away, pleading with Wade to take Maggie away. Wade fights one of the cops before Maggie enters, telling them that she has not yet changed. The compassionate sheriff departs, reminding Wade that he must decide what to do with her before they return to check on Maggie. Wade shows Maggie white flowers he grew in her mother's old yard, Daisy, being a nickname he occasionally uses for Maggie. She thanks him for the beauty of the garden, but she also asks him to swear that he would make it stop before she deteriorates. Wade afterwards sits alone with his shotgun, unwilling to fire it. When Maggie comes, he pretends to sleep, her skin graying and her eyes darkened. She hovers over him, sniffing him and kissing his forehead, as if on the verge of losing control. Maggie exits the house. Wade loads a shell into the shotgun after noticing one on the floor. Maggie has gone to the roof and leaps from it, her final recollections of herself as a child playing outside with her mother, picking a flower. If you like this movie, click the link in the description below to watch it today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Have a great day ahead.